<laughs> Welcome to the Spokane City Council uh, briefing session. Uh, Welcome back, Terry Fister. Thank we you. missed you. you. Uh, could you please call the roll? Council President Biggs. Here. Council Member Bingle. Here. Council Member Cathcart. Present. Council Member Kinnear. Present. Council Member Stratton. Here. Council Member Wilkerson. Present. Council Member Zapone. Here. Let the record reflect that all council members are present. All right, we're going to go a little out of order so that we could get Council Member Stratton on an airplane to Olympia to lobby for us. Uh, and so we're going to talk about the uh, current agenda for tonight. There are multiple things that people are requesting that we add. So I'm looking for a motion to suspend the rules for purposes of adding things to the agenda. So move. So move. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right, the rules are suspended. And I'm just going to go in order here. The first is uh, on the consent agenda, item 11, a contract with CompuNet. Um, is there a motion to add that to tonight's consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? That is added. Uh, next is... Resolution uh, 14 on this, declaring the city council's attention to establish sales and use tax deferral program, et cetera. Is there um, either council members of or Kinnear, do you want to tell us what that is? Yes, I can. We've been working on this for a while. And in fact, we were working at almost cross purposes until we discovered that we were both working on this and then we joined hands. So essentially it is excuse me, establishing the sales and use tax that the state already permits us to do in uh, developing underused land, notably surface parking lots downtown, so that, and it is at a 50% right now. Um, our legislators said the best way to move this forward was to um, uh, pass a resolution, so if it needed to be adjusted, either, um, downward and create more of a uh, incentive then we could do that but our first step in getting this going is to pass a resolution as a city yeah i would just add to that the resolution sets up a hearing for the end of the month yes. to do it so that's all this is doing and then we could implement the ordinance to establish the okay. pavement yeah. to people program okay thank you all right is there a motion to add it to tonight's agenda so moved to add. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right. Resolution 14 is added. Resolution 15 is uh, a precatory action before actually talking about a contract which is under special considerations. So there's currently a contract to help do space analysis for the and feasibility on the Primera building. Um, this would uh, allow us to expand the scope of that contract. Um, I forget how much more money it is. 20000 If you shout it out, I'll tell you. I'll just do it. Uh, it's 26250 uh, More. Okay, so it's 26000 and some change more to do it, but it's going to also include uh, feasibility of... Um, moving uh, City Hall uh, over there as well as a potential. There's a lot of space over there. So it's just all feasibility. There's no decisions about what's going on, but we're trying to get the most data possible during our 90-day feasibility study, which is halfway over. So again, this isn't the contract. This is just the resolution allowing us to sign the contract without putting out for a re-RFP and things like that. Council member, Catherine. Yeah, I just I think the description is slightly misleading because while I think it's it's expanding the scope to look at this building as well to see yes could could certain services and departments here work there but it also get, just gives us the data we need to see you know what the status of this building is and can, can we make some better decisions even with this building or in terms of looking at other uh, properties so it's not specific to the Primera right but it doesn't look at other properties either just the Primera building right at this, because that's the only one we have a purchase and sale agreement on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 
but it looks at this building. It builds on the same, if I understand, the same organization has been studying all our space utilization here, and so it builds on that work. And, and, uh, but I don't think, there's nothing in this study that compares it to another building, a third building. Yeah. But it would allow us to do that work. <clears throat> Yes, it does. So it, it looks at uh, different departments and it looks at uh, three different levels of finish and it says, okay, based on the three different levels of finish that you need, whether it be for courts, council chambers, um, or just general office, cube farms, or actual office, finished offices, this is approximately what you're looking at on a per square foot basis to pay for that renovation. Yes, it's currently at the Primera, but you could also uh, trans easily transfer that into another blank canvas, whether it be a downtown location, a fresh build, et cetera. Gives us options. Mm -hmm. Council members, a, yeah. Pun. And, yeah, and, so I think there's a couple studies that's been making confusing, but I want to clarify a couple things. So this vote for the future contract under special consideration, but essentially now's the time we're talking about it. Yeah. Um, is from our last Thursday conversation, which only expands the scope of the current Integris project at Primera to include City Hall, nothing else. That, that is correct, yes. Uh, in discussions with uh, the Integris folks, uh, it would take, based on some of the information that they have, if we were to add on top of that, we're look, right now we're looking at uh, about a seven week window of what the work would be uh, to finish just the the uh, scope of services with uh, courts as well as city hall uh, departments moving into a space like the Primera facility. If you were to add more, you would be looking at approximately a 30 days. Right now we're in the uh, the feasibility study period as Council President alluded to. Uh, we're, we're more than uh, halfway through and with seven weeks, we're at looking at 49 days uh, left to complete the contract once signed, um, and we're, we're already past our 45-day mark that, that lapsed on Thursday. So as a follow-up, it does not include what it would look like to have police move out there or other city departments, and it does not include the separate study that Integris is doing of utilization of City Hall. It just uses the idea that City Hall is underutilized, but it doesn't say what are the options that we could do at City Hall in this building. No. No, no, that, I, yes, that is correct. <laughs> but that's covered somewhat in a different study. That is covered somewhat in a different study. Uh, right. the, the overall, as, as I believe administration has mentioned uh, many times, is that, that that study, the facilities you should study, is currently in its draft format in its, init in its infancy of its uh, data that it has. But yes, being able to utilize the, the information that it has on the the uh, capacity usage of City Hall to move to a different campus. And do we have ideas of when the utilization of City Hall options would be completed or presented, even preliminarily? I but can't speak to that, but I, I can definitely reach out to Integris to see what that date would be. But we have the preliminary usage numbers, utilization numbers, correct? Yes. And, yes. and can, you, can you relay what those are, the preliminary? Uh, the, the only one that I can actually relate to that, that I've had conversations with both Integris as well as um, the, uh, the, the facilities uh, staff, which Jeff Teal and, and Dave Steele, um, is that currently um, City Hall is being utilized at 60% of its current capacity. That is considering that um, every uh, individual that is here, whether they be on a hybrid uh, schedule or they be on a full-time schedule is counted as a desk at that point in time. Um, so that number could be much smaller. Um, realistically, probably is considering the fact that we have that two out of five uh, workday uh, option for all employees. Councilmember Bingle. And so <clears throat> this study will help us to understand what it would take to move City Hall. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're moving it out of downtown but if we were to move City Hall, what it would, it would require. Mm. Correct, so this, I mean, really what it does is it says, hey, you know, uh, given what you're using right now, can you fit into a uh, campus building, et cetera, at, a, at approximately 100,000 square feet or 120,000 square feet, whatever it may be, and what is that going to cost if you're um, building from ground up, if you're renovating a current facility um, based on the level of finish that you're looking at. So it is transferable data. 
uh, that can be used if, if you were to expand that search of within uh, the downtown corridor or looking at other types of facilities at that point in time. Okay. So I, I've talked to Matt about this a lot. To me, this is foundational information to take a lot of the speculation out of what if, I don't know, what would that look like? Can we move? Can we not move? What is the cost? I believe if we get this study, it'll be foundational, and then wherever we decide to go, to stay, to go, to go somewhere else, this would be critical in the decision-making process because right now, to me, we don't know what we truly don't know about what the cost of this building is, what the future looks like uh, in the workforce and what our needs will be as a city. And then looking to me at the whole financial picture of underutilized space and cost going forward, I think is something we have to actually educate ourselves on and be prepared to make some tough decisions. And I personally could not make a decision without some additional data to build that on. So that's why I'm leaning in that direction. Councilmember Zappone, then Stratton. Yeah, so from my understanding from all of this, it's a time constraint issue of what can be done in the 45 days. Mm -hmm. And it seems like based on this contract, we're prioritizing a study of finding out information about City Hall from that. I'm wondering why we aren't prioritizing police instead of City Hall as that option of what gets studied first, mm -hmm. especially if we're looking at selling the Gardner building, we have to relocate them anyway. And we've been talking about that for a while too, so that I, I guess I'm struggling with that about why we chose why we're choosing in this contract to prioritize city hall over the police in that case, if we only have a set amount of time. Yeah. And well, I, I guess I would just say too. I mean, I think there are, and, and you're right. This whole thing started in my mind because we were looking initially at police and courts, mm -hmm. and then it migrated to courts, and now it's migrated a different direction a little bit. But um, I I think part of the question I have in my mind is what exactly is the needs um, for a, a new headquarters? Because one, I think we are moving uh, smartly towards more pre a precinct model, which I think spreads us out. And so I think maybe changes what that configuration is for a sort of headquarters, if you will. And so I, I think there's a lot of unknowns there, but I, I would be fully supportive of expanding this to look at that if we could, or, or you know, adding another supplemental um, that would that would look at what their needs are uh, and do that study but but I think it's just a little bit different than what we're talking about here because there's so many unknowns with the the changes in strategy at SPD right now so that's that's kind of my sense Councilmember Stratton so this is my reality tell me if I'm wrong okay so what this is we're we, this is a study that is really specific though to the premier building to this one building and my concern and my frustration and what i'm struggling with is so we can do this and spend the twenty six thousand and add it and get that done so let's say we get a call from the owner of the building on washington and boone which is got a lot of space and 900 parking spots mm -hmm. If that, if we get that call, we're going to have to do the same kind of thing, right? It, it, it's not that we could take what was part of this study and apply it to right. a different building. <clears throat> that's what I'm struggling with. No, that's correct. But mm -hmm. I, I would say that um, in th this study, whether it be simply for courts or for both courts and uh, for City Hall or both courts and police, at this point in time, the level of this study is very, very high, meaning we're floating at a 30,000 foot view to say, can these departments fit in this building and roughly what is it going to cost based on the level of finish? Not saying, okay, um, this is into the details, design, build, uh, going out to bid on, on specific contracts, et cetera. It's, it's looking at a, at a very high range saying, this is roughly where you're going to be at based on what you're looking at. Now, yes, I, I believe um, if you were to look at Primera, which is the Primera campus, which is a, is, is a relatively new building and campus, all three buildings are relatively new versus something that is like City Hall, for example, and is a 110 year old building, it, the, 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 the costs that go into it are going to vary significantly, but that will need to be done 
even if you go into the Primera purchase thinking um, this is, you know, going to be the new police priest or the new police headquarters and courts uh, building, or it's going to be the new city hall and courts headquarters, because they are going to have to get into the details of what exactly that cost is, not high level. They, it is going to take anywhere between 18 and probably 30 months just to design, build, et cetera, on this. So it's not a hey, this is the exact answer for just right. this building. I mean, we're going to have to make a commitment at some time. Right. right? So this, this is just giving you that information to say, are you willing to make that commitment on this building, given the information that, that Integris, mm -hmm. we, Integris is giving you of baseline estimates of this is what it would take for you to um, fit mm -hmm. all of the departments that you're requesting us to evaluate into this uh, facility based on the, the, the current specs that, are, that it is at right now. Okay. But I, just to follow up, I think if the building you're thinking of, the Waltworthy office. I, it could be any But if it was that building, that's closer to the Primera building. I mean, that's similar. So it's not that none of the information from the study could be used. Mm -hmm. It's just that it would have to be but we'd have fine. to do another. There would be, have to be some, but there's going to have to be regardless. Even if we buy the Primera, we're going to have to do that fine tuning. Right. So I, I, I don't. It's not complete apples to apples, but maybe apples to pears. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. It's a, so. well, I was just going to say, I. That's still speculative. What potential properties may be available to us in the future, and then could we afford those properties at the time they come on the market? So. I still think if we were to look at another building, we're going to have to invest some money up front for a feasibility study there as well, because we're not going to spend millions of dollars without doing a feasibility study on the building. So at this point in time, to me, it's information gathering to help us make the best decision to buy or not to buy this building as we go forward. Councilmember Bingo. Sorry, real quick. Washington and Boone, are we, what building are we talking about? Rock Point. Rock Point. It is Rock Point. Okay. And is that just a wild rumor, or, should, or is there? <laughs> yeah, just, there's some just, possibilities. Really? Okay. Yeah, I mean, th that's that's why I'm struggling with this, and I'm also struggling that if if we, I also know, I think we all know, the pressure is is that municipal court can't fit in that entire building, or they can't fill the entire building up. Right. Right. And I totally support. Um, municipal court being in that building, mm -hmm. but do I support moving forward? It just feels fast, and you know, talking about putting city hall in that building, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So if I say no to that, am I saying no to to municipal court? I mean, if we say no on the study, it just takes the city piece out. Um, courts can still have could still work that mm -hmm. building, right? Uh, yes, I mean uh, the the I mean from from the from the uh, viewpoint that can they fit into that building? Right. Yes. Is there other financial implications that we need to evaluate as a city before we make that move? Yes. I think that's where um, this conversation kind of uh, just transferred into. I mean, it, it it just it just morphed into this conversation of how do we maximize the space that we currently have or that we are going to be purchasing. Let's not have empty space um, because there are only a finite amount of resources and taxpayer dollars that we can utilize upon. So let's not um, go into a, a, a purchase of a multi-million dollar building not utilizing that space completely. Uh, is there hypotheticals out there of can we lease that space out? Can we get other departments to look at that space? Yes, the, 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 that, those questions have been thrown out there. Uh, but again, just as I stress on Thursday, those at this point in time are hypotheticals. Um, we, we really need to get into the, the reality of can we fill that space? And if we are filling that space with our current departments, 
what are we vacating? What are we, what are we uh, creating a less utilized space? What building or facility, whether it be uh, City Hall, say if we're taking, you know, 15% out of City Hall, now we're less than half percent of that, or half of the utilization of the City Hall space if we were to move 15% of that workforce over to the new facility. And then we're sitting at two buildings that might not be 100% maximized. So that's, that's, that's the thought of, of looking at, hey, can we fit the space-wise into that? And that's, that's why that question was asked. Well, and that's why, I, that's, that's my part of my heartache is we know the police department, or I have heard the police department said no to the space. So they've said no to the space. So the next likely um, candidate for that space would be City Hall, right? And that's where I'm having, I'm struggling a little bit with that. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't, I, I wouldn't take it as necessarily the next, next likely candidate. I would just say it, evaluating it to see um, is, that a, uh, is that a space that, that City Hall can fit into? And really, from a high-level perspective, again, what would that capital investment be? Because um, a, as we all know, the, the question has um, been asked several times over over the past 20 years or so that, you know, can we relocate City Hall, whether it be to another building in the downtown corridor to make a smaller footprint on the outskirts or whatever it may be and whatever that question is. If it is to lower the cost, then we should look at all of those options as we are evaluating purchases and sales of, of our facilities and our portfolio. Thank you. I, I think the, the, the biggest question or the, the, the biggest reason that, you know, I, I support looking at and, and collecting all this data is obviously our, our current financial situation at the city. And so from, from your perspective, you know, for folks that might be watching, I mean, can you share, do you believe Just that through this, there could potentially be a cost savings, uh, both for operations as well as on the capital side for, for the city? Um, at for first blush, I would say yes. Uh, it, it, it seems that uh, just, just from the bare cost per foot of the building itself um, and just rough numbers of, of just, again, very intro numbers because Integris hasn't even started their study officially because we don't have a signed contract. But just to say on those rough numbers and this price per square footage, based on what we're seeing in the downtown corridor, as well as uh, the amenities that are included in this facility, and that primarily being the, the car parks that are associated with the facility, um, we could fit into that space and uh, from, from an initial investment, I believe, be ahead. Um, again, initial assessment, uh, initial estimate only. Uh, I, I cannot speak to the particulars until we get further down the study. And then just from the operations perspective, um, there, there are things that we know that it's a more efficient building. With newer buildings comes energy efficiency, right? Just looking at the utility rates, we see a huge, huge cost savings keeping the lights on there versus City Hall versus Monroe based on the on the square footage of those facilities. So there are operational savings, but again, there are also um, op operational investments that we're going to need to make if courts moves over there. We have to talk about transportation to and from the jail for defendants, um, the security at that facility, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, maintaining the grounds of a large campus like but, that. But that presumes Primera, but, but this could also mean cost savings if we could find a different property somewhere else that maybe meets our needs. Or, Absolutely. And Absolutely. So. I, I think it boils down to looking at the cost per square f footage of the initial investment and then adding on to the cost per square foot of what the level of finish that Integris is going to be providing, saying, okay, per, per our recommendation, you need 40,000 of level one finish, you need 20,000 of level two finish, and you need 60,000 of level three finish. And this is how much each of those costs. Once you fit that into those numbers, you can have a pretty good estimate to say, okay, roughly, putting into the variable of what the cost of the property is that you're looking at, this is what I'm going to be paying on the, on the other side. Okay. Council members of Penn. Yeah, so I guess my struggle with this is that it's about priorities, about prioritizing what information we want. 
and it's very limiting. We're only going to come back with information about what it would look like to move City Hall into Primera, not what would it look like across city resources, across the whole spectrum. <coughs> um, so that seems to be me that we're trying to move forward with one thing instead of getting all the options. And I would much rather look at more options than a limited option of just one thing. Um, so it's really hard for me to keep moving forward with it. It's, it's challenging, be, but this, this has been part of the frustration of the process is because <coughs> there's been a lot of resistance to looking at anything. And so here we are. We only have a few days. We don't have time to do that. But it doesn't preclude us from doing that. If we purchase the building, <coughs> yeah. we can look at everything, including wastewater. There's a wastewater building not very far away from there. I'm like, and I haven't, I don't know how many people are there and how much truck parking they need. I mean, but this doesn't preclude what, what you want. It doesn't, it's, it gets us some more information, but. I guess, my, like, what, what would it look like to prioritize that in the last 45 days instead of the cost of what it would be to build a city council chambers there versus a utilization of space <coughs> across city departments? Well, that's, that, that's, that. Currently, that's currently taking place. So that space utilization across all city departments, right. this, the, the purchase and sale of the Integris throws a wrench in it. And right. to, to say, okay, I'm going to take all of uh, City Hall or all of the uh, City of Spokane's uh, portfolio and then piecemeal it into this, into this uh, Primera campus it would take much more than 90 days to look at all of those going into that. But the overall study, if you take the Primera piece out, is being evaluated from uh, administration's perspective, and that's, that's, the, that's the facilities utilization study that they're doing right now, and that's what they're looking at. So it makes it just difficult uh, under the timeline. I guess what I'm trying to say, though, is I would prefer a high level, like, here are your options in this building, rather than <laughs> here's one option in this building that's supposed to help us decide if we want to purchase this building. If we're trying to decide if we want to purchase this building, we should have kind of an idea of all the options, not just one idea. So I, I get it's a struggle, but... Yeah, I just don't know how to do it in the time frame. I, yeah, I don't yeah. disagree with you, but go ahead. Well, I, I wonder, could we uh, essentially prioritize it in such a way that, that the study is looking at those elements specific to this building uh, first, but we expand the scope to continue beyond the 45 days uh, to, to look specifically at, at this building for broader uses? Is that something that would that we could do, like a supplemental to the supplemental, uh, to 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 expand that? You know, prioritizing the data that, that would be needed to make a good decision on that building, uh, but then also continuing on to collect the additional data on this on the the uses here. But the challenge is, we have a window of time uh, that we put our down payment, our earnest money in, on the table. Correct. But and I think Councilmember Cathcart's mm -hmm. saying, okay, we we're stuck. So. We sign the contract tonight, and then we start working on the, the next amended right. version yeah. of it to cover both of what you're talking about. Which would be great, but if we're not going to agree to uh, go ahead and purchase with our earnest money in the time frame, unless somebody told us we've gotten extended, we still have to make it. Could that happen. conversation is happening? Yeah. Okay, great. <clears throat> one, one last thing, I think. Um, I'm trying to understand the draft of the utilization study that's been going on. And what does a draft mean? If we're using this as a foundation for kind of making our next assumption, does that mean we can confidently say the current numbers are using it in the draft or are kind of what going to be the final numbers? Or is it still in phases of utilization or uh, phases of study and right. that number might come back in a different way? Uh, from my understanding and talking to uh, Integris as well as uh, facilities is those uh, numbers have a high degree of certainty to what there will be in the final report. Um, the, the reason that they are considered draft is because there are many phases of the report that, that need to be finished before that report is issued. Again, this is something that I can just speak to on a very high level. Mm -hmm. I would recommend, I believe it is uh, Tanya Wallace um, or uh, Jeff Teal that is probably running this facilities uh, utilization study. And if you have specific questions right. for that, they would be the ones to answer. And I'm just giving generalities right. of, of what I've heard and what I've known based on my conversations with Integris. And then I would say we should have ask Jeff to come answer those questions for you, because, or Dave Steele, or, yeah. Right. I, don't, I think that's really out of Matt's scope. Yeah. For those well, questions. I think it's important <coughs> for the assumption that we're making here that so we assume that the assumption is correct. Yeah. I guess. Let's it's get Mr. Steele down here then. Yeah. Or Teal. 
steel and teal. All right. S and T. Yeah. You're just trying to carve time off for tonight's <laughs> legislative agenda, but is there a motion to add <laughs> resolution 15 to the agenda? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. It's been moved and second. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 <clears throat> aye. Opposed? I'll, nay. Okay. All right. I think the ayes had it. Any abstentions? Sorry. Okay. Ayes had it. So it's added. That gets <coughs> us to resolution 16, and also Councilmember Bingle has uh, a resolution he'd like to add as well. I'm not sure what number that is, but we'll find out. Um, resolution 16 is authorizing the allocation of $150,000 from traffic calming fund to go towards a new promenade on the Howard Street uh, junction of Riverfront, Riverfront Park. And I believe, was there an amendment or a substitution circulated? Yeah. Do we have to add it before amending it? Why don't you oh, make the motion to amend? Yeah. So I want to make a motion to amend it to a circulated draft that just shows what it would look like with a cycle track, two lane cycle track on the east side. <clears throat> Is there a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on the amendment? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed nay? Any abstentions? All right, it's amended. Now is there a motion to add resolution 16 to the agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed <coughs> nay? Any abstentions? Okay. And then Councilmember Bingle, you circulated a resolution on the north-south corridor. And I don't know if we have a number. Have you sent that to? Yeah. Resolution 2023-17. Okay, 17. Okay. Do you want to explain that and then we'll bring a motion? Yeah. yeah, it's just, I mean, quickly, we all agree that, you know, we don't want the funding from the North South Corridor pulled. It's pretty strong unity from all of Eastern Washington's uh, elected officials and governments. And so uh, just basically formally adds it to our tier one legislative agenda and, uh, you know, hopefully helps our state legislators have some backing to say, hey, this is something our, you know, our people want. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you have a motion to add it? So moved. Is there a second? Okay, it's been moved and second. Any discussion? I, I have an amendment. Would you prefer that come after we add it to the agenda? <clears throat> At this point, yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? All right, you have an amendment, proposed amendment? Yes. Uh, so this was sent out earlier today, I think in advance of our, our one o'clock um, cutoff. Uh, so this just amends the therefore be it resolved, and I will just read the, the whole thing here. Uh, now therefore be it resolved, the city of Spokane requests the Washington State Legislature maintain the previously approved funding, but expedite the <coughs> allocation timeline to speed up completion of the North Spokane Corridor and fully fund the project to its completion prior to its current completion date in 2029. And be it also resolved, the city of Spokane declares that continued funding for the North Spokane Corridor to ensure completion prior to 2029 is therefore added as the city of Spokane's tier one top legislative priority for the city of Spokane. So uh, um, my amendment effect effectively calls for making this our top priority, but it also um, doesn't just advocate that we maintain the funding, but that we actually expedite the process of completion, which has been what we have been asking for the last two years. So first, there's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Councilmember Kinnear, discussion. And so I'm a little concerned about the amendment because it's, it's uh, predicated that we, con that we don't continue to have supply line issues or labor shortage issues. So we may be requesting <coughs> something that can't be done given, Sure. you know. So I, I guess, what I'm, what I'm calling for is that it's, that they speed up the funding mechanism. I guess that's really all we can control or, or they can control. We, we, the other piece is, you're right, we, we, we have no ability to control that. So if there's labor issues or supply issues that slows the work down, we, we can't control that, I agree. But we, can, but we can encourage the legislature to speed up the allocations to make it possible. And that's what our representatives from the third legislative district have been advocating for the last two years. I know they both have, or all three of them have, have tried to um, expedite. And so it wasn't until this year that the idea of possibly losing the freeway or, or a, a significant delay of the freeway was even conjured up. And so I just, I don't see any reason that we should back down from, from 
our our thrust of trying to get this thing done ahead of time, especially when you think about all the other implications for East Central, for Division Connects, for everything. I mean, there is a lot of reason, uh, a lot of benefit for the entire community to getting this thing done sooner than later. So, and I don't, I don't disagree. I just want to make sure we don't set expectations that just because they prioritize funding, that all of a sudden <coughs> magic's going to sure. happen, mm -hmm. and we're yeah. going to have lots of laborers and supplies. So, agreed. So that's that's my minute. Councilmember Wilkerson. I'm not opposed to the uh, resolution or the amendment. I do want to say that we know our legislators have been in support of additional funding and to expedite it. We also know that STA has been supportive. We also know that the Spokane Regional Transportation Council, which ma is made up of the area municipalities and other government entities, have also sent in a resolution uh, supporting the funding of the North-South uh, Freeway. So there has been regional support for this uh, all along. We know the governors kind of did a little backpedal on the funding issues. So we can pass this. I don't know if it will really bring any more weight to bear than what's already been put out there. If this is a level of redundancy, <clears throat> or we're just kind of late to the party as a city council, but our support for the North-South Corridor has been uh, expressed in many levels going forward. So I just want everybody to know that that support is already out there uh, in many shape, forms, and fashion. And just to <clears throat> note, it is on our tier one legislative agenda, but in a more general fashion. So this just clarifies and focuses. Now we have new information that there was some risk of delay, which we had no idea. So this does that. So. All right, Councilman Bingo. And that's, that's it, because as you say, I mean, again, near universal support. I, I can't think of any one person who has, who has opposed <clears throat> this that's in that position. But again, it does just formalize our support going from an informal thing to a, to a formal statement. And uh, yeah, I think that's the point. Yeah. Council members of Palm. Yeah, I just had a question about the language used in the amendment. Um, I'm just wondering how come it was like, we're gonna advocate for it to be done earlier and not say on the 2029 or earlier, but it's more like, if you do it in 2029, we're not happy with you. Sure. And so I guess that's, that's my, that's my concern. It seems a little <laughs> aggressive, I guess, when we're like, hey, please help us, but also give us more than what you already uh, promised. I, R rules are suspended. I would, I would take a friendly, friendly amendment. amendment. Yeah. All right. So you have an amendment <laughs> to the amendment. Oh, he takes it as a friendly. <laughs> like, I didn't word that, but yeah. And so, so while you're doing that, substitute the but, get rid of the but in there and put and. Would you like to make the amendment? No, go ahead. <laughs> okay. It's just so better English. So amending it to say previously approved funding and expedite yes. the allocation yeah. timeline to speed up completion of the North-South Corridor and fully fund the project to its completion um, in 2029 or earlier. Yeah. Okay. And then the second one would be ensure completion in 2029 or earlier. Okay. And can you, that's great, when you get done. Write it. Email it around right. to And then everyone. keep it, therefore, added as the city of Spokane's top yeah. one top legislative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, well taken. There's a friendly amendment. All those in favor of the friendly amendment to the amendment, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? All right. All those in favor of the amendment as amended, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? All right. Um, and we voted to add this to the agenda mm. already? Yeah, yes. we did. We were just amending it. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> serves me right for doing it differently on two different ones. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. So then that brings us to special considerations. And again, I think we've debated this or discussed this extensively, but it's adding the actual contract with the yeah. um, expanded scope uh, to the agenda. Doesn't mean there can't be more discussions between now and 6 p.m., but this would just add it to the agenda. So is there a motion to add it to the agenda? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, any more discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Aye, any opposed <clears throat> nay? Any abstentions? Okay. All right, now, Mr. Piccolo has been waiting so patiently to brief the advanced agenda. Uh, take it away. Okay. Before we leave the current agenda, did you want to brief oh. on the contract item number 11 with CompuNet? We might as well if our person's here. Okay. We have Raylene Jeanette, I believe. All right, come on down, Raylene. Good to see you again. This is for the, 
Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you, Council President and Council Members, for looking at this um, uh, request to suspend the rules. Um, this is for the Nutanix system down at the treatment plant. Um, it's been in our budget plan for this year. Um, we had a little mishap um, down there and very worried that we've got it back up kind of running. Um, so we, we were trying to get supply chain issues on all those things to make it so we can try to get this as quickly as possible um, so we don't have a failure down there. It, it's, uh, it's for the uh, SCADA system um, as part of the plant, um, brains of telling, how to, telling the stuff to work. Um, and it is, uh, I got this right, it's with um, Com uh, CompuNet and it's for uh, $339,596. All right, any questions? All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go far. We have you doing a few more items. <laughs> <laughs> so on the advance agenda, the consent agenda, we have first item, a number of purchases in the, for of wastewater products. Uh, Numbers uh, number one, A, B, and C, and we have Lauren Searle who will brief those items. Good afternoon, council members. Mm -hmm. uh, item number one is the purchase of miscellaneous waterworks project uh, products. This is our spring bit of uh, parts purchases. Uh, it's split between three different suppliers, HD Fowler, for a total of $90,770. Consolidated supply for $35,779. And core and main for $278,668 for a total purchase price of forty or $441,683. Uh, any questions? Thank you. Mm -hmm. In the next three items, two, three, and four, Rick Giddings will address those. Uh, they include purchase of electric vehicles for fleet services, uh, tire service also for fleet services, and electric equipment installed in, v in city vehicles, obviously also through fleet services. So, Rick. Thank you, Mr. Piccolo. Good afternoon, City Council. Um, uh, item number two is uh, purchase approval for two 2023 Chevy Bolt EVs from Bud Clary. Uh, this is for fleet services. Uh, purchase price $68,404 including tax using the Department of Enterprise Services contract. Uh, this will be replacing two motor pool vehicles that have reached the end of their economic life. Uh, interestingly enough, <laughs> one of the vehicles we are replacing is the city's first electric vehicle. Uh, 2011 Nissan Leaf, which parks here mm. at City Hall. Wow. And if I can indulge in a couple of fun facts, 12 years ago, the Nissan Leaf, uh, uh, which boasted an 80 mile battery range, was purchased for over $32,000. Uh, adjusted, adjusted for inflation, that would be about $40,000 today. Uh, by contrast, the Chevy Bolts that we're looking to buy are $31,400 each plus tax and advertise a 260 mile range on a single charge. Um, you can do what you want with that information, but I thought that was an interesting tidbit. Uh, item three is amendment to our value blanket for uh, Pomp's tire. We recently elevated Pomp's tire to our number one uh, tire and service supplier. So we would like to increase our value blanket from 150,000 to 500,000. Uh, this will be using Washington State contract uh, 519. <coughs> And the last one for me is the third of four contract renewals with Raycom, critical communications for a total not to exceed $150,000. We use Raycom as a backup to our own radio and commissioning departments uh, for the installation of radios and police vehicle upfitting. Haven't had to use them much in the last year, however, <laughs> there are more police vehicles coming in and uh, so there may be an increased need uh, to help us avoid vehicle backlogs. Any questions on any of those? Thank you. The next three items, five, six, and seven, will be addressed by David Payne, and they de all deal with the waste energy facility. The first one is purchase or delivery of calcium quick lime. Second one is hydrated lime for the facility. And then the third one involves repairs at the facility. 
Good afternoon, Council President, Council Members. The first two are value blankets. The first one is with is the renewal two of three with Pete Lean and Sons for the purchase and delivery of pebble lime that we used in our emissions control systems. The second one is also with Pete Lean and Sons for the purchase of hydrated lime, which we are running tests and experiments on for replacing some of the pebble lime uh, to better improve our emissions and reduce our overhead costs. The first contract for quick lime has a value of $1,500,000. The second value for the hydrated lime has a value of $568,209.10. The last contract is with DIVCO for $30,000. It's an addition onto our current contract with them for unforeseen repairs that we incurred at the end of the year last year. Thank you. <clears throat> the next item, number eight, is a five-year blanket order at Riverside Park Water Reclamation and Raylene Jeanette will brief uh, eight A and B. Thank you, council members. Um, yes, this is a five-year value blanket um, for polymer down with wastewater treatment. We use this in three of our different processes down there. Um, this is uh, going to be with two different companies, Polydyne. Um, have, we'll have part of it or, or some of it, and then we can also use the Marabou America. Any questions? No. Thank you. And Raylene, while we have you there, we'll save oh, you a my, trip. Is my next one the very next one? You're number 10. So we're going to jump to number 10, which is a okay. low bid Perfect. for industrial construction of Washington. Perfect. Uh, so um, item number 10 is for um, the rehabilitation of the Shiloh Hills um, pump station and Force Main. Um, uh, it's been out there for 45 years, so this is completely rehab that, that station. Um, uh, low bid went to Industrial Construction of Washington, and they're out of the tri of, Rich of West, West Richland. Um, and it is for $780,200 um, plus tax, um, and we'll keep 10% reserve. Any questions? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Going back to number nine is a consulting agreement with GSI Water Solutions and Colin Naik will address that one. Good afternoon, Council. Um, this is the, uh, the uh, consultant agreement with GSI Water Solutions for the um, Yellowstone Pipeline Vulnerability ass Assessment um, for the amount of $263,000 and $285,000. Um, and so this uh, vulnerability assessment addresses the vulnerability of our two uh, wells, uh, Well Electric and Park Water, to a release from the Yellowstone Petroleum Pipeline that runs in their um, uh, catchment area. You remember it well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Number 11 is a contract amendment and renewal with TruePoint Solutions, and Mike Sloan will address that one. Good afternoon, City Council. And item 11 is on behalf of the Planning Department. It's a re request for a renewal, uh, one of four with TruePoint Solutions, LLC. TruePoint provides professional services in the support of the Excella based on business changes and or enhancements that staff um, City staff is unable to conduct where a cello doesn't provide that service. TruePoint has been a, a contract service for the last six years, and the request is uh, for uh, not to exceed 100,000. Uh, over the last five years, we averaged about 26,000 per year. Uh, whenever we see a be change that's coming to cello upgrades or enhancements that we need to add, uh, and that's why we typically come in with a request for $100,000. Thank you. Number 12 is a placeholder holder for the report on the mayor's claims and payments. Number 13 is a placeholder for the council meeting minutes. Going to the legislative agenda on special budget ordinance. First one will be presented by council member Zapone, dealing with public safety personnel funds. Oh. Um, this is just about the uh, it's called mobile camera uh, and establishing the funding for that. That's okay. Oh, and Council President, I did forward the information you sent to the police and they said they were looking into it, but don't know if they will send anything back. But it is only a one-year pilot, 
So that gives them a year, a year to figure out something else for next year. Not a hill I'm going to die on. <laughs> but I think we could get a lot more cameras for that if we just yeah. put in our system. But yeah. The next item is the under emergency ordinances. Uh, ordinance number 36259 dealing with conduct of collective bargaining and council president Biggs will brief that item. Um, we have, are making some changes with this, which would have been nice if I sent that to you yet today, but I'm still waiting to hear from the collective bargaining units, but essentially it would shift from, they have to come to executive session before they go into T TA to, they have to let a member of the council staff go to the bargaining sessions and that way we'll just always know what's going on because this was supposed to cure the problem of us not knowing what's going on. Does, but does that solve the issue of, of determining when a contract is TA'd from our perspective? Excuse me, I have the hiccups. Um, I don't think, I think that the problem we were trying to solve is there was a long negotiations going on. We had no idea anything and then suddenly, so this, by having a staff person as part of the bargaining team in the room, we should be able to have, know what's going on. So I don't, the labor unions and the administration explained to me that it is very challenging the way the ordinance was worded because they tend to, if I understand it, I haven't been to their sessions, but they tend to TA sections of the contract hmm. along the way. And it's only when they get to the last one that they come to us. And so they feel like they need the certainty for the first 20 clauses and that having to come to us every, every time ahead of time would really be problematic. And I accept it, at least for me. And so you'll see some language. I'm just waiting to hear back from the unions. Okay. On it. <clears throat> I'll, I'll just say on that, uh, one of the things I've, I've become frustrated by in this is when these conversations are happening and then it's like, we don't want any electeds in the room. Um, that has excluded us from discussion on Camp Hope uh, when you know it greatly affected our, what was our district at the time. Um, and so if this were something to happen, I would want the ability to be in on the, on the discussion because it does make it to where, uh, you know, again, we're still getting secondhand knowledge, even though it might be from somebody we trust, it's still secondhand knowledge. Um, and so I don't know if there's any language there's, we should work out there. Well, there's an issue there. Right. And you can talk to our lawyers sure. off, offline, but the issue is there's an argument out there that if you were a council member as part of the negotiations, then you couldn't vote on it. So right. that's, that's a, I don't know the exact parameters of that. Mm -hmm. So before we do the final, let's get that clarified. Yeah. So, but you were brought into the conversation on one of the police contracts. Would I that know. not have, so where's the lawsuit on that? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not, it's not my field of law. So, but I'm just saying the administration raised that issue with me. Okay. So that's why I haven't, that's why I put it in the way, but please talk to city legal about it because I'm not sure. Okay. On to resolutions, resolution 2023-0012 regarding supporting the establishment of the Spokane River Watershed Salmon, Salmon Lead Entity and council staff member Jacoby Berg is ready to go. Hi council, this resolution was briefed to you all at PIES last week from Connor Georgie from the Spokane Tribe. It supports the establishment of a Spokane River watershed salmon lead entity, and if supported by you all, would allow you guys to participate in that group. And this is ultimately resulting from state legislation that asked for local leadership in developing the plans and actions that would need to occur in order to introduce salmon back into the Spokane River watershed. Yeah. So the, the funding is coming from the West Quadrant TIF, is that correct? That's the next thing. That, no. Oh, okay. I was no. reading the wrong part. Okay, never mind. Keep going. And uh, quickly on that, it establishes the Spokane Tribe as the lead entity, correct? Correct. Yeah. Yep. We'd be an initiating government. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Resolution 13 regarding the Neighborhood Project Advisory Committee for the West Quadrant Tax Increment Financing will be addressed by Spencer Gardner. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, 
Hello, this is the project that I presented at um, the, fin the Finance and Administration Committee. Uh, was it last week, two weeks ago? I don't know. I just, Tyrrell just told me that I am, my one year anniversary is tomorrow. I'd kind of forgotten that, so. Wow, congratulations. Uh, my mind is still jumbled, uh, getting my bearings. Anyway, um, I've already presented on it. I'm happy to pull the presentation up again if anybody has questions, but uh, this is a project that's supported by the neighborhood and by the NPAC, the Project Advisory Committee. So they've brought it forward for council to consider. I would add that we've been going through this before your time. So this has been a long process. I'm glad it's finally got some teeth. So thank you for your part in it. Yeah, and as a reminder, uh, two blended funding sources. This is uh, TIF money from the West Quadrant TIF and traffic impact fees um, for that area that's been designated. So. Uh, I would just say it's, it's been a pretty good year. I think you've done a great job for the city. So Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. There are no final reading ordinances for first reading ordinances. <clears throat> Ordinance 36356 relating to the water department and water rates and Corinne Morris. And I don't see her here. I'm not sure if this was briefed at the finance committee previously. We've had some, we have had been briefed on this. Okay, mm -hmm. well I will give her a call and just ask her to make sure that she. And we do have somebody, who is that on the phone up there? Is that her? Okay. I think what it basically does, right, is just make it to where people who are like snowbirds can't have their uh, water rates reduced when they're away. Is that? They can, it? they can, they can, they can turn it off and turn it back on. Mm -hmm. Oh, they can't. I thought it prohibited them from doing that. Oh, is that? Oh. that it, it says to charge a basic water service yeah. charge whenever there's they water can't. service available. Mm -hmm. Here, Lauren's mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. oh. Yay, Lauren. Okay. Sorry, mm -hmm. this was supposed to be Korean, but it's not. <coughs> um, the basis of the ordinance currently on a, um, any meter that gets turned off stops the water service charge. The new billing system does not allow for partial rates on, partial rates off. Mm -hmm. um, so this would change that and all water service charges would remain on as long as the service is connected to the water main. So snowbirds or um, a house goes in default and the bank now owns it, it would remain on, the service charge would remain on. The difference within a, a department is we still maintain that service. We still have responsibility for the leak and the issues that are in the road, even though that we're not getting any uh, revenue back off the residents. So are you saying that, that, you, that this will make it so that you wouldn't turn the water off if they request it, essentially? You'll, we would, you'll, you'll we charge would turn the water off, but, but you'll the still charge, charge would be on still, yes. Okay. It's just the water service charge, not that's it. Not the actual water. Not the actual water. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's because they're not using any water. Right. But, well, uh, yes. Yeah. They're, they're, not, they're not using the water. Currently, we mm -hmm. do turn the rate off because they're not using water. Right. Um, th which would remain on in the future. And so let's say somebody who wanted to go uh, to Arizona for a few months. Um, if water is still coming up to their house but is shut off to where it's not going into the house, they're still charged could they request that it get shot off at the main to where they don't get charged at that point? Uh, no, we don't have the ability to turn it off at the main. Okay. That would be cutting the road and digging it to be able to turn it off at the main. You can't it easily is, do that, no? We, we, can, we can do that, <laughs> um, but it would be a whole bunch of patches all over in the road. Yeah. Um, it, and it's not uncommon in the area. Mo most of the districts around us do have their service charge on as long as there's a service going into the property. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that is because of their added maintenance um, responsibility, even though the water in the house is turned off. Right. And, and so today, what, what is the rule today? That you can't turn it off or that you can and you wouldn't be charged? Uh, today we do turn the water off and the rates stop. So you don't the get water that. service, the basic service okay. charge stops. So that's the difference. Okay. Thank you. Um, in the future, we will turn the water off still because we don't want the pipes to break in the house. But... Uh, the service charge, the monthly service charge would remain on. And that is simply because we still bear liability if something were to break 
uh, you know, with the piping going to the house. Correct. Yeah. Correct. We still have that liability. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we actually do visit Snowbirds uh, more often than any other house. Hmm. We were there four times a year or so, um, mm -hmm. versus a regular residence where we might only show up every 10 years. Uh, I, I believe it's in the, it, it was in the brief, uh, in, the, in the paper, I think that's only 700 um, houses within the entire city that uh, have that temporary turn off throughout the year. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. And the last ordinance, 36357, relating to the sales and use Deferral program, council member Zappone, I think this has already been discussed. Yep, we just discussed it earlier today. Great, that was the resolution for the hearing. This would be the ordinance. Yes. Right. Okay. And there are no special considerations <clears throat> and no- Sorry, on the, on the ordinance itself, uh, so the tax deferral for um, the property is if it has 50% AMI or 50% of them are- Of units. Of, are affordable are units, housing. right. For the, for 10 years or is it even for they beyond have to pay that. It back. It's 10 years, I believe, and then they pay it back. And so then after the 10 years, since it's a deferral, they pay the tax in 10 years? It's on the construction of it. Okay. Is my understanding. But we can double check. So we, we had a discussion with our legislators saying that we didn't think this would be utilized based on the developers that we talked to. Right. And lo and behold, somebody from Tacoma said, hey, I know how to do this. And I'm ready to go. We still want to pass this ordinance because if there's a way that we can amend it, or if there's a way that the legislature can amend it to lower that 50 to say 25, that would be ideal because there are not that many developers who could actually make this pencil out at 50. Right. So, but they need us to do this before they can do their work. I'll just follow up. Uh, um, Jeff we is saying that no, they don't have to pay back. So Jeff has been doing all the research on it. Okay. Yeah. They, the, we can't go beyond what the legislature says, yeah. right? Now. So we need to do an ordinance that matches the legislature, that. and then if the legislature changes it, we can amend our ordinance. But for for just the deferral portion, that's really on us to decide. It's the it's the forgiveness forever that's really the at issue, right? So we can have a policy that allows us to defer when we collect the dollars based on what our parameters are. I think it's really more if it's gonna be an indefinite, that's where the state issue comes in. We'd like to we'd like to actually change it so it's lower at the state level. So that was why we decided to go ahead with this. Show them that it's not necessarily gonna be advantageous for all developers. We've found one that can do it, but nobody else has come forward. Okay. And this is a developer from Tacoma who somehow knows how to make this kind of stuff work. The only, the only other piece I'd add on this, and this is something that was in uh, the uh, infill task force 2015 infill task force's recommendations, which was to collect permit fees um, and, and well, any fees really at after the CO has been issued. And so just to give, especially the smaller builders, developers who may not have as much uh, collateral capital, the ability to, to get it, you know, built, sold, rented, whatever it is before then paying the, the fees. And so if there's any opportunity to build something like that in here as a short-term deferral piece, I think that'd be great. And we've been looking at other, um, other things that we can do that would be incentives so that we can kind of layer the incentives, especially for downtown, to build up that um, density downtown. So we've been working with Steve McDonald and Marlene, what else can we do that would add to the incentives that people could use? So our, I guess, like ideal outcome for us would be an, uh, an affordability component that we're closer to 25% and not 50%. Yeah, because 50% 50, 50 is a lot. That's yes, going exactly to be hard to, yeah. to actually accomplish. But the fact that somebody came forward and said, hey, I can do sure. this. Sure, yeah. I'm interested to see if indeed that person, that developer can. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. Any other thing for the good of the Lord? Kind of a robust briefing session. Mm -hmm. For a short uh, meeting tonight. Yeah, so we've done all our work. So <laughs> <laughs> we've done. Uh, okay, well then we're gonna be adjourned. We'll see everyone. Do you wanna approve this agenda? Oh. <clears throat> no, I don't, but uh, <laughs> apparently based on actions. 
Is there a motion to approve the advance agenda? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed, nay? Any abstentions? All right, the agenda is approved, and we are adjourned until 6 p.m. See, Lori, we do all the legwork here. That way, the meeting later.